Adventures in Time and Space, transcribed in future tense. Dimension. Can you predict what will come in 100 years, or in 10, or in the next minute? Can you see beyond the known dimensions of time and space into the unknown dimension X? Today we tell you a story of America's largest city, a story that began in the bustling city room of the New York Metropolitan Theater. Sweeney? Pop, give me a rewrite, quick. I'll take it. Okay, now look. I'm up on the other side drive, see? So? So, at 12.45 today, just three minutes ago, Grant's tomb disappeared. It's what? I'm telling you, it disappeared. It's gone. Listen, Sweeney, get yourself to a Turkish bath. Sober up. Pop, I swear, I'm sober as a judge. Listen to me, will you? Just a minute. Albert! What's up, Pop? Call the hundredth detective precinct. Find out if anything's been reported missing. Like what? Like Grant's tomb. Go on, make it snappy. Okay, Pop. All right, Trini, now give it to me slow. This better not be a gag. No gag, Pop. Now get it down. The traffic at the drive was at its noon hour peak, and the benches and structure were filled with happy laughing people. Then, without a warning, a rumble sounded in the alarm. Populous water is part of us. Hold it, Trini. Well, Albert? I don't get it. They say that... That... That Grant's tomb is gone. Okay, call some posing. Tell them to hold everything for an extra. Tear out page one. Get going. Okay, Sweeney, now. The heck with the words, give me the garbage. What happened? Nobody knows. There are half a dozen police cars around here staring at the place where Grant's tomb was. I was about a block away. I heard screams. I came running. It was gone. Vanished. How many dead? Nobody knows if anybody is dead. I'll find out. How can I find out when everybody was sitting on the steps and all disappeared? What? It's gone. Nobody? No tomb, Pop. No tomb. Okay, you hope it back up there and get stories from some witnesses. Now call me back. Albert! Yes, Pop? Get Columbia University on the phone get a statement. Right. Research! Yes, sir. Grab an encyclopedia see if anything like this ever happened before. Hey, Walters! Yeah, Pop? Call the army. Find out about secret weapons. Right. Hello, composing. This is Pop Adderby on the city desk. Start setting up an extra. I want to hit the street in 20 minutes. Second extra in an hour with pictures. Okay, what are you waiting for? Get them rolling. <laughs> Pop. Oh, I'm busy, Albert. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Pop, uh, Mr. Colborn wants to see you. Toronto. Tell him I'm busy. Well, he, he says to come now. Oh, of all the flat-headed publishers to saddle a newspaper with. Okay. Sweeney calls. Switch it to Colborn's office. Okay, Pop. Come in. Listen, Mr. Coleman, I'm very busy now. There's an extra on the rollers and... I know. I just called composing and ordered them to stop it. To stop it? Are you... Adderby, you've been on the city desk of the Herald for 25 years now. Since when do you waste thousands of dollars on an April Fool issue? April Fool? Listen, Grant's tomb is missing. Is that a story, or am I dead from the neck up? Did you check it? Yes, and Sweeney... How do you know it's true? Well, if you... What do you mean spreading cold terror all over town? But Sweeney... The devil with Sweeney. How do you know it isn't just a hallucination? Mass hypnotism, something like that. Well, what if it is? Adderby, if this is a farce, we'll be in Dutch, but good. Civil suits, criminal action. We're the only paper in town on the streets with an extra. The other editors don't believe this story for one instant. It takes guts to run a paper. Well, if that's what it takes, you've got too many. You took the authority for this without even trying to find me and get an okay. Your father-in-law knew a story has to run while it's hot. All right. You ran this while it was so hot, our first ten papers drove the city into a panic. How do we know this whole thing isn't a big... Hello. Now there's Carborn. Yes, he's here. It what? Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine and dandy. You're fired! What? It's your star reporter, Mr. Sweeney, 
formally of the Herald. Formally? Give me that phone. Hello, sweetie. Uh, Did you get the pictures? How are things uh, up there? Uh, I'll need more witnesses. Uh, hey, what? It's back. Fine, fine. What did you say? It's back. Grant's tomb is back. I'm sorry. You're sorry. All right, golden boy. Now give it to me slow. Make it sound intelligent. It, it just reappeared, that's all. What about the people who were inside? All back. Don't remember a thing. It's just like it never happened at all. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. We got an extra on the streets with 28 types screaming that Grant's tomb has vanished, and you calmly call me up to tell me that it's back. But it was gone. I tell you, Pop. Sweeney, what? do me a favor, will you? Yeah, what? Drop dead. Well, that'll be. Uh, guess we run our attraction. Just doesn't make sense. Twelve police cars saw it. We've got statements from witnesses. I told you it was hysteria. Look at the man from Mars broadcast that Orson Welles did. A thousand people will swear they saw the monsters. Oh, I don't know. I'm all confused. Well, let's look at it this way, Adderby. Maybe you've had enough. Enough what? You've been on the city desk 25 years now. That makes you, uh, let me see, 55? 54. What are you driving at, Mr. Colby? I mean, maybe you ought to retire. Retire? We need new people, new ideas. I've been thinking about it for some time now. Uh, with uh, Social Security, you'd get... Uh... About 20 bucks. Fine. Now, you listen. I brought this paper into the world, and it's going to take me out. I was on that city desk before you ever heard of a stick of type. Then you come along and marry a publisher's daughter That's and... enough. I made a mistake, okay. Anybody can make a mistake. I still think there's something in this story. Sweeney's been around too long to blow one like this. Even when he's drunk, he's a better newspaper man than most. I'm of... sorry. Effective today, you're relieved as city editor. Sanford will take over. Sanford? Why, he's green as grass. If you want to stay on in some minor jobs... Such as? Well, how about science editor? Science editor. <laughs> you can have the office right next to mm. mine. It'll pay the rent. Well? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Been on the city desk so long. Oh, maybe it's too much excitement for a man your age. Stop writing me off, will you? I'm sick. I'm <clears throat> 54. And a man at 54... He's no longer a boy. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I am losing my grip. Got to go somewhere and think it over. All right, Adderby. Take your time. I'll be across the street at Burley's Bar if you need me. I'll let you know before the bulldog hits the streets. <laughs> Haven't you had enough, Pop? Yeah, this is a solemn occasion, Burley. For the hemlock. What's the occasion, Pop? Yeah, I am now a husband. No. Yeah, reduced. Humiliated. You, Pop? Never. Meet the new science editor of the Sunday Supplement, me. <laughs> know as much about science as J.P. Morgan knows about sharecropping. <laughs> what happened? Who did it? You familiar with a reporter named Aloysius John Sweeney? Yep. Former friend and drinking companion of mine? Sweeney got you busted? The same. Wow. If that gentleman should ever, by some misbegotten chance, thrust his head into this bar, Burley, my friend, I personally, with these two bare hands... Hey, oh, Pop! No. Pop! Uh-oh. Hey! Pop, Pop, it's me. I shall control my homicidal instinct. Listen, Pop, I just came down from Riverside Drive. Very daring move, Sweeney. I brought a guy with me. It won't help, Sweeney. Pop, you don't understand. I found a little guy in a swallowtail coat who watched this whole thing happen. Pop. Burley! Burley, quiet! Quiet, everybody! Shh, quiet! Quiet, will you? How do you do? Gentlemen? I can assure you my small stature belies the magnitude of my abilities. What did you bring him for, Sweeney? He's a genius, Pop, a full-time genius. You betrayed me once, Sweeney. Isn't that enough? Take your little man away and don't bother me. Your friend isn't very polite, Mr. Sweeney. 
Perhaps one day he will learn that even the most insignificant man has a sense of dignity and personal worth. I apologize, Professor. I'm not so at you. It's your tomato-headed friend here. Sweeney, I ought to kill you. I ought to strangle you with my bare hands. I ought to have you run through a rotary press at low speed. Those things are too good for you. Pop, look, I'm trying to tell you. The story ain't phony. It happened. Mr. Pert, we... Hannibal, tell him about it. Gladly. My contribution has been awaiting worldwide recognition for many years now. Unfortunately, there are some who insist I am insane. Fancy that. Yeah. Being small of stature, as you can see, I chose to nurse my resentment rather than to take positive measures. However, I feel now the world is ready to come to terms with Hannibal Pertwee. Uh, can you or can you not explain this Grant's tomb business? Naturally. What? It can all be explained quite simply in terms of the Pertwee system of infinite acceleration and transportational facilitation as applied to freightage. I've been trying to sell it to the railroads for ten years. Didn't I tell you he was a genius, Pop? Believe the check. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pop. Give him a chance. Show him the trains, Hannibal. Oh, yes, the trains. If you gentlemen will gather around the suitcase... Come on, I want you to see that. I'm telling you. Come on. As you can see, I have in this suitcase a complete model railroad reduced to the size of a cigar box. Observe. That's enough, I think. They run! Just like real trains! Sweeney, not content with ruining my life, losing me my job, driving me to alcohol, you're now trying to drive me out of my mind with an obvious madman who builds model railroads. Here's the money, Burley. Keep the change. Oh, but Pop, Goodbye, look. Goodbye, gentlemen. Pop, you're not even giving them a chance. Out of my way. Listen, Pop, out please. Out of my way. It's always the same. They won't listen to me. Oh, I guess Pop is losing his grip. I hate them. No, don't take it so hard, Hannibal. Maybe it was all a hallucination. The Pertwee theory is not an hallucination. Sure, sure, sure. Well, it was a good try anyway. I guess I'll go back to the office and pick up my stuff. But I'll show them. Someday they'll listen. Sure, sure. You'll show them, Hannibal. Hey, Burley, fix Professor Pertwee here with a double scotch. Go ahead, make it a triple. The newest use of the isotope will enable medical experts to trace with accuracy the growth of... Oh, oh, nuts. Yeah, maybe it's better to be unemployed. Science editor speaking. Pop? Yeah? Sweeney, listen, I got a story. I thought I'll... Carl Brun canned you. Heck, can't fire me. Listen, you know Burley's Bar? Does DiMaggio know Yankee Stadium? What about Burley's Bar? It's gone. Oh, sweet. On the level, Pop, just a few seconds ago. Take a look at the window. Sweeney, I warn you. Take a look, take a look. Okay, Sweeney, hang on. Albert? Yes, Pop? Do me a favor. Stick your head out of that window and tell me if anything unusual is going on at Burley's Corner. Okay, Pop. Holy jumping catfish! Huh? It's gone. Come here and look. Well, I'll be a monkey. Hey, where's Colburn? He went to a polo match out on Long Island. Who's on us at the desk? Young Stan. Come on. That's city desk, Sanford. Okay, I'll give it to rewrite. Just a second. City desk. What? Are you nuts? What? Hey, everybody listen to this, will you? It's Martinson down at 34th Street. He says the Empire State Building has disappeared. Can you feature that? What are you going to do about it? Do? Am I supposed to do something? He's gone nuts. Give me that phone. Hey, let go. Give me that phone. <laughs> Hello, Marty. This is Pop. Pop, what are you doing out there? Never mind. What happened? Well, I'm down at the precinct. Five minutes ago, a 
cop staggered in. It's gone, he says. What's gone, they say? The Empire State, he says. Well, I figured I better call. Okay, get you get down there and get the details. In case you need to convince a Burley's bar went just before you call. Holy mackerel, what a catastrophe that is. Okay, Pop, I'll call you. Look at the skyline. The Empire State isn't there. Well, no, no. Don't get panicky. Don't get panicky. It may come back just like Grand's tomb. Oh, okay, Pop. Hey, you'll take over, won't you? I'm kind of shaky. Will I? I'll show you fledglings how to run a newspaper together. Will it? Yeah, Pop. Get a camera down to the Empire State. Right. What a story. Call the mayor, Albert. Tell him what he, ask what he intends to do. Check, check. Where's the research department? Right here, sir. Columbia University says it's mass hypnotism. Tell him to... No. No, I'll dress it up and shoot it down. Yes, sir. Research. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Find out how many people are usually in the Empire State. Yes, sir. No, and don't try to call the Empire State to find out. No. No, it isn't there. <laughs> Sit in death. Two. Frank Walter, listen, I'm dead sober, see? Yeah, the garbage, Frankie, the garbage. Remember, I'm sober. S is in sober, O is in sober. Come on, come on, what happened? Uh, help me, Pop. Penn Station just disappeared. Vanished. Thin air. Jumping turtles. The people, too? People trained the works. I'm telling you, there's a hole a block wide. I was lucky I was only a block away. You saw it? I witnessed. Oh, bless you, my boy, talk. There was a rumble, see? A kind of electrical hum in the air. And all of a sudden, the station seemed to cave in on itself. Wango. Nothing. Any statement? No, but you ought to see the hall. Oh, get statements, flathead. Where are you now? I'm over at the post office. Right across the street from Pop! Pop! Is anybody Hello. Hello. Hello, Frankie. Frankie, operator. Pop. Pop, we got a flash. The United States Post Office just went... The whole darn city is going piece by piece. Don't lose your head, Albert. Hello. This is the composing room about that Empire State building story. Well, it's its own news. We've just lost Penn Station in the post office. Get out a new banner head. New York City vanishing. What about cops? You don't need copy for a story like this. Tell that liner type operator to use imagination. Albert. Pop. Anything else missing? Chrysler building, maybe? <laughs> Nothing yet, Pop. Oh. Anything reappeared yet? No word on anything. Maybe things are stabilizing. Call composing. Tell him to start rolling. Right, Pop. And find Sweeney. Tell the phone from downstairs a while ago. I forgot all about him. Mm -hmm. Tell him he's hired again. I'll print any statement that isn't immoral. Uh-oh, Pop. Here comes Mr. Trouble. Adam Oh, now, check it. These are called, but... Adam B., what are you doing at the city desk? Where's Sanborn? What's going on here, anyway? Has everyone gone out of his mind? Listen, the Empire State, the Penn Station, and the post office have all been missing for almost five minutes. Get away from that desk, you. Drop that telephone. Listen. I don't care if Washington, D.C. has been bombed by the Martians. I want you out of this office in two minutes. Albert, cast those extras. Pop, you get out your fire. Oh, you're not being raised. I'm not interested in the other papers. Just get out of here before I go stark raving mad. Pop! Hey, Pop! Oh, hello, Sweeney. Where have you been? I've been trying to make up my mind whether to come up or not. When you left me hanging on the phone, I thought you was insulting me. I... Hey! How come you aren't on the desk? Oh, I'm Ken. Ken? Are you kidding? Oh, it's been coming. I really had the place jumping. You should have seen me, Sweeney. It was like the San Francisco earthquake. Oh, I need a drink. How about... Uh... Keep forgetting. There isn't any Burleys anymore? No. Just a big hole in the ground. Let's walk over. I want to browse around. Oh, uh, Pop, there's nothing to see. Well, let's take a snoop anyway. Just for old time's sake. Well, okay, Pop, let's cross. We got the light. Who'd ever thought that less than ten minutes ago there was a building here? Yeah. Let's climb down and have a look, Sweeney. 
Well, um, what for, Pop? It's, uh, it's getting dark, you know. We'll break our necks. Sweeney, where's your old reporter spirit? Come on. Well, okay, but I don't see what you expect to... Ah, ah, ooh, my ankle. Ooh. Easy, uh, easy. Oh. Clean as a bone. Well, let's walk around a bit. See anything? No, just rocks, pieces of the foundation. I'll bet you the... Pop, wait a minute. What? Well, you look at this. It's so small, I almost missed it. Well, I'll be a son of a... A perfect scale model of Burley's. Less than four inches tall. What do you suppose this is doing here? I don't know. Can I help you, gentlemen? Wait, we. What are you doing down here? I'm looking for my model. Thank you for finding it. Oh, this is yours, is it? Certainly. Now, if you'll be kind enough to hand it to me, I'll just put it back in my suitcase. Uh, you better give it to him, Pop. All right. Thank you. There we are. Thank you, gentlemen. I thought you just went in for model trains. I have always been preoccupied with tiny things. But lately, I've been branching out. Well, I really must be going. Thank you very much. Uh, he's as loony as a bat. Ah, the geniuses are all crazy. I read it in a book. Sweeney, did you get a look in that suitcase? Hmm? Sure, I've seen it when he opened it in the bar this morning. I mean just now. Oh, why? This morning when he opened his suitcase, he had a little round tube and a set of model trains in it. Nothing else. So? This time he had three other models. So what? Nothing. Except they happen to be models of the Empire State, Penn Station, and the United States Post Office. <laughs> There he goes down the block, Pop. Bertway! Bertway, come back here! He's starting to run. Here, here, here's a cab. Come on. What to, Mike? Catch up with that little guy running down on the block. Make it fast. Okay, Mike. There he is. Hold it, Cabby, hold it. Come on, Sweeney. Hey, how about my toe? Hey, you bum! Stop, gentlemen. Stop, I warn you. Hey, Pop. He's got that little tube out of his suitcase. He's pointing. Grab him, sweetie. All right, give me that thing. Let go of my arm. Give it to me. Ah, there. I warn you. Never mind the warnings. Just you come along with us. We're going to have a little talk. Take him up to the office, sweetie. Sure. Pop. What? Where's the taxi? What? The taxi. If you look at the curb, you'll find your taxi. Jumping saints. Pop, look at it. Now, gentlemen... Perhaps the world will believe in the validity of the Pertwee system of infinite acceleration. All right, Hannibal, now you start talking. I won't. Hold his hand, Sweeney. That's a pleasure. Uh, well, Hannibal? Uh, let me out of this office. Talk. Never. Sweeney, where's the tube? It's right here, Pop. Now, Hannibal, I give you five seconds to talk. After which I'm turning this tube on you for a taste of your own medicine. Now, think it over. One. Two. No. Three. I hate them. Why should I save them? Four. All right. Put it away, please. That's better. Now, how did you do it? Many years ago, Einstein posed the theory that if an object were sufficiently accelerated, it would gradually flatten out and eventually disappear altogether. Working on this approach, I evolved a method of accelerating the atoms within the molecules, setting an object spinning in four rather than three dimensions. For many years, I tried to sell my idea to the railroad for condensing freight and storage. And you th start the thing spinning with this little tube? The tube sends out a whirling ring of electrons which engulf the object. Why did you turn it on those buildings? I was driven to it. Only something dramatic could shock the world into realizing my greatness. But you'll restore them. You brought back Grant's tomb. 
I can restore them, yes. Not can, Hannibal. Will. On one condition. Well? That your paper give me full credit for my scientific achievement. Front page, pictures, a complete story. It's a deal. Oh, wait a minute, Pop. We don't even work for this paper anymore, uh, remember? Well, uh, we'll take care of that little matter, Sweeney. Mr. Coleman, this is Pop Atterby. You've just rehired me. Now, if you'd care to step down the hall into my new office, I think I can show you something, make your hair stand on end. I have three missing buildings in my desk drawer. Well? <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> Says he's coming down here to have me committed to an institution. Fine. All right, Atterby. All right. What's going on here? I fired you. I ordered you off these premises. If this is a joke, well, I... Well, Mr. Colburn, you see these models? What about them? What would you say if I were to tell you that these five-inch models are actually the Empire State, Penn Station, the United States Post Office, and Burley's Bar, and a taxi cab? All compressed 500 times, that there are people in them so tiny they can't see them, that even time is so compressed inside these buildings that movement is impossible. This is insanity. Who is this man? I, I Sit don't... down, Carbon. The show hasn't even started yet. Sweeney, mm. put the taxi cab out in the middle of the floor. Okay, Pop. Now, stand back. Hannibal, here's the tube. Now, do your stuff. Stand back. Now. Good Lord. I don't believe it. It's getting bigger. I reversed the polarity of the spin very gradually. What's the idea blocking Trappy, you lousy bum? Hey, where am I? Hey, what happened? How did my cab get in this office? Take it easy, George. What is this? Who are you? Hey, ain't you the fair that skipped out on me? Hey, what is this, a bug house? Well, Mr. Colburn? I... I... I don't understand. But you do believe. Well, yes, yes. I saw it right before my eyes. Okay, well, then here's the deal. You give our boy Hannibal a front page spread with pictures. He'll take these other buildings back to the original sites and restore them just like they were, with our cameras getting exclusive shots. Now, is it a bargain? Is it a bargain? I may not be the best newspaper man in the world, but this is the biggest thing since Noah's Ark. You're rehired as city editor at your old salary. My old salary? All right, all right, plus a 500 bonus. Ah, well, it's a deal. Sweeney, call composing. Tell them to double the size of the front page. Have them hold it for a red banner full page headline. Got that? Right. Hello, Albert. This is Pop. Listen, I want all photographers up in my office right away. Call the search. Tell that girl to have Columbia send a battery of big shots over to the former site of Penn Station. Copy, hey, cop, Mike. Copy, boy. Hey, Mike. I'm busy, George. Sweeney, what's the word? Mess that. All right, all right. What is it? All I want to know is, how do I get my hack out of this office? just heard another adventure in time, space, and the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. How would you like to leave your home and friends for a trip that might last for ten years or forever? You'll hear all about it on Dimension X next week when we present... Shanghai. Today, Dimension X has presented The Professor Was a Thief, an adaptation by George Lefferts of a story by L. Ron Hubbard. Featured in the cast were Arthur Maitland as Pop, John Larkin as Sweeney, and John Gibson as The Professor. Your host was Norman Rose. Music by Bert Berman, engineer Bill Chambers. Dimension X is produced by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Three times mean good times on NBC. Tonight is the time for the premiere of NBC's gigantic Sunday night broadcast, The Big Show. Every Sunday evening, starting tonight, you'll hear an hour and a half of the greatest stars in radio. Performers like Fred Allen, Jimmy Durante, Ethel Merman, Frankie Lane, Meredith Wilson, and many, many more. And your MC will be the lady who invented the snappy retort, 
Tallulah Bankhead. It's the big show. Hear the big show later today on NBC.